Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tavis Leaf Glover, and today we're going to be covering this really amazing painting by Adolf Herschel. He's a Hungarian painter that died in 1933. This is a really complex painting, and I'm going to go step by step through the analysis process. If you're a MasterPass member, there's an action in the resources at the very bottom. You can see this. It's an action for Photoshop that basically makes all of these layers, so you don't forget to look for a certain technique. But the first thing I do is measure the ratio of the image. So if you go into image size, you'll see the pixels. So you divide that, so 3508 divided by 2109, and then that's going to give you the ratio of the painting, and the reason we want the ratio is so we can look for the grid that he used. So we're going to go into the dynamic symmetry ratio guide. This is in the back of the dynamic symmetry book. And we find that the 1.66 ratio is equivalent to a few different grids. And we want an approximate ratio. We don't need to have it exact, but we'll try certain grids out. And if they don't work, then we can try another grid out. But the grid that I found works best is this overlapping root 6 grid that's an increment of 3. So I've got that on here. And this is the basic armature of that grid. It's basically just root sixes overlapping each other. And this is all explained in the book, but you don't have to know that to use the grid. Just basically, you gotta use the grid, align things to the grid, and it's gonna promote certain design techniques, which I'll cover in a sec. But this is the basic armature, and you can see certain things lining up, the hands, that the chin, but this one is so complex, he needs more lines to help organize all these smaller elements. So you can take the root six, you can make it something like this if you want. You can organize these grids however you want, infinite number of ways. But the other one that's in the grid package, this one is the root six, MAD 54 increment 3 and I believe this is the exact same one that he used but the way we can tell that is to look at the diagonals of the composition not the verticals or the horizontals sure those align as well but the thing that really helps us identify which grid they used is the diagonal so we can take a look at this woman right here the diagonal of her head right here is the same diagonal found in this grid but that's not the cool part we follow her arm here it's locking in there and then if we work our way down her blouse here you can see that it's zigzagging exactly to this grid so it makes me think that it, this is the exact grid that he used and then it's locking in down here so locking in and this is it doesn't have to be mathematical though the process of first creating a drawing with the grid and then transferring it to canvas or just the whole process of painting nothing's gonna be mathematical like a computer but you can get it pretty close and that's what we see here but when we zoom out we'll see that these are the areas locking in I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this and you'll see all the certain areas locking into the grid and then there's other areas paralleling the grid which just means that the line is in the same direction as a diagonal but we can look closer we'll see how all these fingers and hands are locking in this woman's head is locking in here I, I forgot to mark that this guy's chin and his neck same diagonal of his ear right here locking in there her forehead her arm the shadow of her arm you can look for areas of contrast significant contrast you can see how this back right here the spinal cord is locking into that diagonal but it's also paralleling right here and then this background area even this man in the background he's locking in there so that's all the areas locking in now the reason we use dynamic symmetry is to help promote certain design techniques and that would be gamut which is the repeating diagonals 90 degree angles and coincidences and we'll cover those so the gamut right here all these diagonals are directly from the grid and if we look close at the grid we'll see there's only four diagonals two major ones this is a major one the broke diagonal this is a major sinister diagonal and then you have the reciprocal diagonals that intersect those diagonals at 90 degrees but you don't need to know any of this stuff to use the grid you just need to use the grid and it'll help promote these techniques but so we have four diagonals repeating all throughout this composition and you can see how they kind of circle around so he's using the edges of these diagonals to try and direct attention and circle the viewers eyes around the composition you can see how they're kind of circling around here so that's gamut now 90 degree angles these are also promoted by the grid this one if we turn the grid back on we'll see I'm going to reduce it and we'll see that this 90 degree angle right here is exactly locking into the grid. So it's promoted by the grid. And the other ones we can just create as we need. But these 90 degree angles, when they're tilted like this, they create a sense of strength. And he's got several in here. And one's connecting to this staff. You can turn it on and off. You can see how it's coming down this staff, running across the guy's arm and chin and this woman's uh, backside. And then it's running up this guy's arm. So that's almost a, a box being created, a square down here is it's got curves in it but it's a hidden 90 degree angle also down here 
So the straight line of this cloak running into this branch, and then it's also coming up on this side, this side of the branch. So that's 90 degree angles. Then we have the edge to edge relationships. These are coincidences. That's any area of contrast that's connecting to another area of contrast on the same movement, on the same line here. So you can see her arm coming down, hitting the edge of this cloak here, then coming down to the edge of this branch. Same with here, the branch coming up to the edge of her cloak. This man's head coming down, meeting the edge of this woman's hair. And we've got this one, his hands coming down, meeting the edge of her chin and the arm in the background. And then this area here, this curvature area, this edge, meeting that, and then coming down, hitting this foot. Same with right here, the stomach and the arm and the shoulder, coming up, hitting the fingertip right here, her pinky, and then coming up to hit his, his eyeball and the edge of his cloak. So you can turn that on and off and see that. But we've got verticals, and horizontals you can even do diagonal coincidences and these are promoted by the grid as well so this one's nice it's coming across his cloak and then to the man's jawbone right here in his ear it's another one the background boat this guy right here he's standing in a boat so the bottom of the boat is coinciding we've got a movement going from left to right to the bottom of this man's cloak and it's the top of her head right here hitting this man's eyeball and is the bridge of his nose and then coming across to hit this man's cloak in the bottom of this flower here so these are all planned or they're promoted by the grid. It just depends on how you use these techniques in your compositions, but you can see that there. So the coincidences, they'll create unity and movement. So it's unifying these individual parts on the same linear element and then creating movement along that line as well. But if you like this kind of stuff, please check out the links in the description below. I make things to help artists surpass their plateau and reach the master level, but we have arabesques. Those are creating unity and movement as well, but in a different way. You've got that sweeping motion. It's like an elegant movement throughout the composition so sometimes to find these you can just blur your eyes a little bit and just kind of take in the composition not really focus on any details but try and look for the connecting movements of the edges and we can see how it's swooping around down this man's face let me reduce the contrast of it so you can follow it so coming down his headdress here swooping down his face following down that cloak around this man's arm around her backside right here and then we're just looking for another area of contrast to help connect this movement and we've got it down here her wardrobe right here connecting down right here the edge of the shoulder the face and then we need contrast either to lead our eyes to the right or to the left and he's got it on the right side with this arm here and then it just keeps following around the other arm around this area of contrast here and then up this man's arm so it's a nice movement going inside of that composition and it's hidden and the more hidden these composition techniques are the better because the viewer can kind of enjoy the image and not have you pointing out every design technique like a magic trick at the end. So we have an ellipse here. If you're looking for ellipses in the composition, you just kind of want to look like we did with the arabesque. You want to look for these circular movements. And we definitely have one coming down this woman's arm and then it hits all this contrast here leading our eyes across this man's cloak coming up the side of her face and then in the background we have more contrast leading our eyes upward and then the cliffs in the background you can see how they're kind of circling around right here so that's leading our eyes around so it's you can see where it's broken up and then it's connecting so that's like a nice hidden movement there if it was a solid circle it would be more obvious but he's broken it up like a dot to dot image we have triangular enclosures right here you can see we now turn it on and off you can see how all these shapes right here are unified in that triangular enclosure that could group them together it unifies them certainly and creates that nice dynamic shape but was this woman really close to him and were these children really close to him it could be part of the story but that's one way you can do it is just to use the design to techniques to help create visual clarity and help with the story. You've got a nice figure ground relationship on both of those main subjects there. Definitely the main subjects. This guy, but then this woman really stands out. The color of her gown there. But figure ground relationship, you just run an imaginary line around the subject and make sure there's enough contrast to help separate them from the background so there's not any confusion. So if this arm were the same contrast as her face, it might look like she's got an arm coming out of her face right there, but it's reduced in contrast to make her come forward more. You can see how they reduce the contrast in certain areas, the back of the neck. And this is fine. These, these are considered lost edges where it's just one shape blending into the next, adds depth to the composition. Aerial perspective helps with the depth as well. And we can see it in the background. Definitely got that that hazy look like a foggy feeling in the background and that helps them pop off that dark background 
Even in this guy right here, the man in the boat, he's got aerial perspective around him. Nice lighting situation there. So the gazing direction, that's when you take the bulk of the composition. So the bulk of the image is where all the significant contrast is. So like this isn't significant contrast right here, and neither is this, but if I turn this off, you can see that there's nice contrast here and here, and then this solid line here. So that's kind of identifying these two lines are helping us identify the bulk of the composition. And then we measure if there's more on the right or on the left, we have a little bit more gazing direction on the left here, which makes sense because we have this small man in the boat, leaves a little bit more negative space to help the composition breathe. Back here becomes unimportant really, and then this becomes more important because there's more negative space over there. It's the balance from left to right, basically. And then we have the actual gaze, which helps direct our attention as well. You can see all these people directing their attention to this man. These people look down, this child looks up, she looks up at him, they look over to him, and then he's looking over this way, and then it just keeps circling around. And all the design techniques tie in together and help create movement, unity, strength, all that stuff. So when we flip this, we can see if the contrast combined with the diagonals within the image create a different movement. Because most of us read left to right, so we read the composition a little bit differently when it's flipped. So right here we have a lot of movement coming up from the left to the right with all these hands directing attention to this man. And then the contrast is on the upper right side here. So we've got a lot of movement coming up this way. And we're reading from left to right. So we've got strong movement from left to right there. Now when we flip it, we've got all of the contrast on the left side. And then we've got all these diagonals down here. But it's changing the movement of the story. But I wanted to bring attention to these little details in the, the drapery. It's really cool how it's just kind of see-through right here, the way he painted it. Same with this, their aspect of view of their face here, and the see-through drapery here. Really nice touch there. And then when we want to view the contrast of the composition, we can convert it to black and white and then blur it. That's kind of like squinting. When we squint at an image, we can simplify the image and see where the contrast is, see where the shapes are. And when we have it like this, definitely touch the contrast is on this main figure here and then the woman next to him helps with that contrast because she's so light there's contrast here as well with this person on the left but not as much as this and we'll see that in a sec but when it's like this we can look around the edges we'll look for high contrast around the edges to see if there's any edge flicker we don't want high contrast near the edge unless it's directing attention into the composition and part of the whole design so right here we can see there's a little bit of contrast on the bottom the lower right side and then the upper area not too much on the right side either but most of the high contrast the edge flicker is on the bottom so we'll see if that's part of his composition so let's turn these off and we'll look and it's part of this person's cloth coming down this dark rock but this is leading attention into the composition on an arabesque you can see it curving around and then curving up right here and you can follow the line and it's curving up so this is leading attention into the composition it's bringing attention to these poor children down here that look like they're really sick and normally you might overlook this kind of stuff unless the artist is smart enough to incorporate some type of technique to bring attention to certain areas that they want to highlight so this area is leading the eyes into the composition and bringing attention to these people down here all these people at first I didn't even see these people until I started analyzing it they just kind of blended in but this kind of helps bring the eyes into the composition these other areas we can reduce the contrast of those areas on the edge just to see if it makes a difference and you can see how it just brings a little bit more attention back into the composition and towards this main subject here so we'll turn that on and off. Just subtle adjustment in the contrast. I would say 30% opacity would be good for these edges here. Just to show you the difference. And then the greatest area of contrast, we take the black and white blurred layer and use this threshold adjustment layer, this threshold adjustment layer on the black and white. You can slide it back and forth to find the darkest areas and the lightest areas. And we found those and we find that the GAC is definitely where we thought it was, but this kind of just helps mechanically find certain areas that we might overlook. But it's definitely this person here, which we assumed was the main subject in the beginning. That's it for Adolf Herschel. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And make sure if you're a MasterPass member, you can download that Photoshop action to help you get all these layers so you don't miss a design technique. This was a suggestion in the comments below, so if you have any other artists you want me to dig into, please leave a comment below and let me know what you guys think. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining in, and I'll talk to you later.